Welcome to this lecture about obstetric Doppler. In this lecture, I will discuss a brief review of Doppler principles. Uterine artery Doppler, Umbilical artery Doppler, Middle cerebral artery Doppler, and finally ductus venosus Doppler. Ultrasound beams are emitted from a transducer at frequency. When it hits a structure that moves, they are backscattered and Doppler shift arrives to the transducer. The information is analyzed and it is represented as a waveform. The arterial waveform is characterized by systole and diastole. If the blood flow direction towards the transducer, the waveform is represented above the baseline. If the blood flow direction away from the transducer, the waveform is represented below the baseline. On the y-axis as you can see on this image, there is the velocity in centimeter per second. It is not always easy to get an angle zero between the ultrasound beam and direction of blood flow. Therefore, the velocity can't be accurately measured in all of the cases. This is the reason why we often use angle-independent Doppler indices to analyze the waveform. If the angle between the ultrasound beam and direction of blood flow is zero, the velocity value reported on y-axis reflects the real velocity of the blood flow. The most useful Doppler indices are SD ratio, resistive index, and pulsatility index. Pulsatility index gives the maximum of hemodynamic information. These indices are independent of the angle. So the values do not change significantly when the angle changes. Look at these two waveforms. They were obtained from the same fetus from umbilical artery but with different angles between the ultrasound beam and direction of blood flow. If you look at the peak systolic velocity, you can see the peak systolic velocity of the right waveform is about 41 centimeters per second with the angle about 40 degree. On the left waveform, the peak systolic velocity is about 27 centimeters per second with the angle is zero degree. Therefore, there is a change in the velocity. But if you look at the Doppler indices, resistive index, pulsatility index, and SD ratio, they are relatively the same in both sides because these Doppler indices are angle independent. Okay, let's start with the uterine artery. The maternal side of the fetoplacental circulation is represented by the uterine artery. The uterine artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery. It enters the myometrium at the junction between the uterine corpus and the cervix. Doppler ultrasound examination of the uterine artery is used in the first trimester to screen for early onset preeclampsia. In the second and third trimesters, Doppler ultrasound of the uterine artery is used in the evaluation of suspected intrauterine growth restriction. Uterine artery Doppler can be used to help distinguish placental causes of growth restriction from other causes of growth restriction. Typically, this screening test is done at 20 weeks of gestation, and if abnormal it is repeated at 24 weeks of gestation. How to do uterine artery Doppler examination? There are two approaches, transabdominal and transvaginal approach. On transabdominal approach, first identify the external iliac vessels. The uterine artery is seen crossing the external iliac vessels anteriorly, as you can see on this image. The Doppler sample volume is placed about one centimeter downstream from the crossover point. Measure the right and left pulsatility index and calculate the mean value. The uterine artery waveforms are displayed here on these two cineclips. As you can see here, 
these two waveforms are different. The one on the right side of the screen was obtained during the first trimester, while the other one was obtained during the late second trimester. You will know the difference between the two in the next slides. In non-pregnant uterus, the waveform of the uterine arteries is high-resistive, with low diastolic flow and early diastolic notching. The resistance to flow in the uterine arteries decreases with advancing gestation in normal pregnancies. Reflecting the trophoblastic invasion of the spiral arteries. So, the uterine artery waveform changes from relatively high resistance in the non-pregnant state to a low resistance waveform in pregnancy, with continuous forward flow throughout diastole as you can see on these images. This process is complete by about 18 weeks of gestation. In pregnancies with impaired placentation, high uterine vascular resistance will persist after this time. Notching is a common feature of the uterine artery Doppler waveform. It is defined as a reduction in forward flow at the start of diastole. It is present normally in non-pregnant uterus and in the first trimester of pregnancy. It is thought to represent abnormal uteroplacental flow. Bilateral persistence notching after 24 weeks of gestation is abnormal. Diastolic notch has been associated with adverse outcomes, including fetal growth restriction, maternal preeclampsia, and increased risk of preterm labor. The uterine artery pulsatility index is a favoring measurement of vascular impedance. Because the pulsatility index indirectly includes the presence or absence of early diastolic notch, a normal pulsatility index should be below the 95th percentile for gestational age. An abnormal waveform is characterized by a high pulsatility index above 95th percentile for gestational age. Persistence of bilateral diastolic notch beyond the 24 weeks of gestation is also abnormal. Therefore, uterine artery Doppler can be used to help predict preeclampsia or fetal growth restriction. In the fetus, the umbilical arteries arise from the internal iliac arteries and are responsible for carrying deoxygenated fetal blood to the placenta. Oxygenated blood returns from the placenta to the right atrium by way of the umbilical vein. In clinical practice, Doppler ultrasound of the umbilical artery is not performed until 24 weeks of gestation. However, in the twin-twin transfusion syndrome, Doppler ultrasound of the umbilical artery is performed whenever the diagnosis is suspected, regardless of gestational age. Doppler study of the umbilical arteries is used to manage fetal growth restriction and to stage the twin-twin transfusion syndrome. How to perform umbilical artery Doppler The International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetric and gynecology guidelines recommended sampling umbilical arteries in free floating loops of umbilical cord in singleton. The fetus should be at rest and not breathing. Because movement and breathing cause variations in the spectral waveform, the angle of insonation is not crucial. Because all Doppler measurements used are angle independent. However, an angle close to zero degree results in the best Doppler shift and best waveform. The resistance within the umbilical arteries, which is recorded as the pulsatility index, reflects the resistance to flow within the placenta. In a normal functioning placenta, the resistance to blood flow should steadily decrease throughout the pregnancy in response to ongoing development of the placental bed. The resistance to flow within the vessels in the placenta is normally low enough that even in diastole there is forward blood flow. As you can see in these images, there is gradual decrease in the placental resistance with advancing gestation.
This is manifested by gradual increase in the diastolic flow. In normal pregnancy, the diastolic flow of the umbilical arteries cannot be detected in the first 10 weeks of gestation due to incomplete villus maturation. It can be detected by about 15 weeks of gestation with the progression of pregnancy. The pulsatility index of the umbilical artery Doppler reflects the resistance to flow within the placenta. The pulsatility index is measured and compared to the gestational age on the charts. A normal pulsatility index of the umbilical arteries should be below the 95th percentile for gestational age. In an abnormal functioning or insufficient placenta, the resistance will remain high. This will be reflected by a pulsatility index above 95th percentile for gestational age. Once the resistance reaches a critical level, blood flow during diastole will be impeded, and this is called absent end diastolic flow. Then, blood flow will be reversed back towards the fetus during fetal diastole, this is called reversed end diastolic flow. So, the natural progression seen in a fetus that is deteriorating would be a steady increase in the umbilical artery pulsatility index, followed by intermittent, then persistent absent end diastolic flow, and finally reversed end diastolic flow. A low umbilical artery pulsatility index is of no significance. Some important tips you should know in umbilical artery Doppler. If the pulsatility index is abnormal, you should sample both umbilical arteries and use the more normal value. You should sample approximately at the mid-umbilical cord. Sampling too close to the fetal abdomen may produce a falsely elevated pulsatility index value. Perform Doppler at the start of the examination, and if abnormal, repeat at the end of the examination. During fetal breathing movements, there are variations in the shape of waveforms from fetal vessels. Therefore, Doppler examination should be conducted only during fetal apnea and in the absence of fetal hiccup or excessive movement. Fetal Doppler ultrasound of the middle cerebral artery is used in two situations. First, monitoring of intrauterine growth restriction fetuses, especially those with increased umbilical artery impedance. In this cases we measure pulsatility index, resistive index, and SD ratio. The second situation is non-invasive assessment of fetal anemia. In this cases, we measure the peak systolic velocity. To perform Doppler study of the middle cerebral artery, a transverse view of the fetal brain at the level of the biparietal diameter is obtained. The transducer is then moved towards the base of the fetal skull. Activate color Doppler imaging, the circle of Willis is easily visualized with the MCA is seen as a short vessel running in anterolateral direction. Assess the MCA which is closer to the transducer. Align the MCA flow direction with the Doppler beam. A small sample volume is placed 2 mm from the MCA origin. Optimize the spectral Doppler baseline and PRF to get a large waveform. This is optimized middle cerebral artery waveform as you can see in this cineclip. Fetal head compression should be generally avoided, as it can artificially lead to decreased diastolic flow in the MCA. Normally, middle cerebral artery has high peak systolic velocity and low end diastolic volume. In normal circumstances, as you can see in these images, the diastolic flow is absent in the middle cerebral artery in the first trimester. With advancing gestation the diastolic flow is established with low end diastolic volume. The normal pulsatility index of the middle cerebral artery should be above the 5th percentile for gestational age.
In fetal growth restriction, there is preferential shunting of blood flow to the fetal brain, known as the brain sparing effect. This leads to increased diastolic flow and hence reduction in pulsatility index of the middle cerebral artery. A pulsatility index below the 5th percentile for gestational age is abnormal. Middle cerebral artery peak systolic velocity can be used in the assessment of fetal anemia, secondary to conditions such as parvovirus exposure, twin-twin transfusion syndrome, and TRAP. This measurement is reliable from the week 18 of gestation. Anemic fetus will have increased systolic velocity in the middle cerebral artery because of reduced blood viscosity. For the best technique to measure the peak systolic velocity in the middle cerebral artery, it is better to use zero degree angle of insonation. The peak systolic velocity is measured. Multiples of the median for gestational age are calculated and compared to the gestational age. The risk of fetal anemia is highest when the peak systolic velocity is more than 1.5 multiples of the median for gestational age. During middle cerebral artery Doppler study, care should be taken to apply minimal pressure to the fetal head with the transducer. Because fetal head compression is associated with alterations of arterial waveform, and reversal of the diastolic flow in the middle cerebral artery. Other rare causes of reverse diastolic flow include impending fetal death and complex cardiac anomalies. Another measurement that is sometimes used in the assessment of fetal growth restriction is the cerebroplacental ratio. The cerebroplacental ratio is a ratio of the middle cerebral artery flow to the umbilical artery flow by using the pulsatility index values. In calculation of the cerebroplacental ratio, the pulsatility index is preferred over the SD ratio. The cerebroplacental ratio has a greater sensitivity than assessing the MCA or umbilical artery Doppler pulsatility indices in isolation. A low or abnormal result associated with adverse perinatal outcome. Ductus venosus is a small trumpet shaped connection between the umbilical vein and the inferior vena cava. It carries the oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. Doppler study of the ductus venosus for aneuploidy screening is performed between 10 and 14 weeks gestation, often in combination with evaluation of nuchal translucency. Doppler ultrasound of the ductus venosus is also performed in the second and third trimesters when there is a concern regarding fetal growth restriction and to assess cardiac function and strain in fetuses with high output conditions. To perform Doppler study of the ductus venosus, use color Doppler ultrasound to localize the site of aliasing between the left portal vein and the inferior vena cava. This aliasing is best seen in sagittal plane in the first trimester and axial plane later in pregnancy. The fetus should be at rest and not breathing during ductus venosus sampling. Ductus venosus waveform has three components. The S wave, the D wave, and the A wave. The S wave reflects ventricular systole. The D wave reflects ventricular diastole. And the A wave reflects atrial contraction. The ductus venosus has a characteristic sound. Its sound looks like the sound of washing machine. Listening while sampling is helpful to confirm correct cursor placement. This is the sound of ductus venosus Doppler. Abnormal findings include the absence or reversal of the A wave. This is associated with increased risk of aneuploidy 
and congenital heart disease. In monochorionic twins, reversal of the A wave is a marker for increased risk of developing twin-twin transfusion syndrome. When reversed A wave is depicted in a fetus with fetal growth restriction, this finding seems to indicate that fetal survival is unlikely beyond one week. Thank you very much for your attention.